we'll be going over IRS Form 433D uh, installment agreement. So this is uh, the form that you would complete if the if you're behind on your tax debt and you're not able to either pay off your tax balance in full, you're not able to set up an installment plan, either a short-term or a long-term payment plan on the IRS website. If you've been going back and forth with the IRS, then uh, the revenue officer might ask you to complete Form 433D uh, so that you can um, eventually work down your tax balance. Before we get to the form itself, which consists of one page, uh, we should probably take some time to cover some notes and, and some instructions. So according to this, if the IRS accepts your agreement, then there are a couple of things you need to be aware of. Uh, one, your agreement will remain in effect until your tax liabilities, including your print, uh, penalties and interest, are paid off. Or the statutory period for collection has expired or the agreement is terminated. The IRS does reserve the right to terminate an installment agreement if a taxpayer does not make the monthly installments as agreed upon in the plan, if the taxpayer does not pay other outstanding federal tax debts when they're due, or if the taxpayer does not provide financial information. For example, uh, the uh, IRS may see that in a future tax year uh, your income has gone up and if that is the case the IRS may ask you for additional information about your ability to pay so if you don't provide that information then the IRS can come back and terminate your installment agreement so uh, a couple of other things two uh, you need to make each payment as agreed to in the terms of this form. If you cannot make a pay scheduled payment, then you need to contact the IRS immediately. Uh, three, uh, you must pay a user fee. Uh, for most taxpayers, this will be $225, uh, which the IRS will re uh, immediately deduct from your first installment. So of your first payment, $225 will go to pay the setup fee and then the rest of it will be applied to your tax debt. Uh, if you apply for direct debit on this form, that user fee is reduced to $107. And for certain low-income taxpayers, uh, the user fee may be reduced to $43 uh, and it can be waived if you're able to make electronic payments through direct debit. If you're a low-income taxpayer and you cannot make your payments through direct debit, then the $43 user fee will be reimbursed uh, once you've finished your installment agreement and your tax balance has been paid off. Uh, to clarify, the IRS defines low-income taxpayers as taxpayers that are at or below 250% of the federal poverty guidelines as set out by the Department of Health and Human Services. So this is an annual uh, a, a number that is annually updated and it is also based on locality and family size. So if you uh, do qualify for uh, for low income uh, taxpayer status, you will also uh, need to file IRS Form uh, 13844, which is the uh, taxpayer form declaring or requesting treatment as a low income taxpayer. So, uh, the anytime you make payments, uh, the IRS will take your uh, earliest tax debt first. So if you have tax debts over multiple years, they'll go back to the first, furthest year that they can and then work forwards. Uh, and finally, uh, you may 
uh, you may see that the IRS files a notice of federal tax lien if someone, if one has not been filed previously. Uh, however, it, however, this isn't necessarily part of uh, the installment agreement, and there may be installment agreements where uh, a federal tax lien is not filed by the IRS. Uh, and one last thing. Uh, by signing this form, you're authorizing the IRS to contact third parties and to disclose your tax information so that you can process and administer. So if you put in your direct debit information, then obviously that third party would be a bank or a financial institution. So, so let's go to the top of the form. Uh, so you'll enter your name and address. If I had access to go down in the form, I would enter my addresses. We'll be in Texas today. And then you'll enter your social security number. If you have a spouse, you can enter your spouse's social security number. And then, oops, and then your phone number. So, all right. So, you can submit a new W 4 to your employer to increase your withholdings. It depends on whether or not your employer is withholding payments. If that is the case, then you would need to uh, complete additional paperwork based on the revenue officer's guidance. So uh, you'll definitely have to double check with the revenue officer. Uh, this paperwork may come in through the mail uh, based on your conversations with the revenue officer. And the reason why that would happen is if you've agreed to terms over the phone and you've got uh, some sort of negotiated payment, uh, you know, monthly payment schedule. So you would, uh, you may need to submit a new W-4 to your employer to increase your tax withholdings. However, uh, this will be checked if you do. Uh, and then what kind of taxes are you looking at? This probably will be pre-filled, but for the most part, we're talking about 1040s for individuals. This could be a 1041 for estates and trusts. It could be 1120 as for a, you know, an S corporation, so on and so forth. And then the tax periods that are involved will assume that it's 2019, 2020, and 2021. We're just putting in three random years and we'll assume that there's a balance of $50,000. Oops, I put that in the wrong spot. So we'll put that there and then this balance would be, let's call it as of May 1st, 2023. So uh, this information will likely be pre-filled for you if you've already agreed to terms. So let's imagine that we say you're going to pay $1,000 on June 1st, and then you're going to pay $800 per month on the uh, fifth day of every month thereafter. So if, if you've already been in an installment agreement and the IRS has come back and asked you for additional information uh, to see whether or not they can, you can increase your, your payments, you might already have this field filled in. They might, the IRS might have sent a copy of this form uh, to you pre-filled with, say, the date of increase. And let's just say that um, maybe beginning in October, 
you're expecting a significant pay raise. So uh, October 1st, you're going to get a $500 a month pay raise. So you're going to increase, you know, well, if the IRS knows it's a $500 a month pay raise, they're probably going to ask for the full $500 and just assume that you can live at the same quality of life as before. But let's just imagine that you're raising your overall payment $200 a month, and now your new installment payment in October is $1,000. So uh, you'll initial this block here. I'll do it electronically just for visualization. Uh, there may be additional conditions and terms. You know, if you're, you know, if you have a sailboat at they're looking to seize, you know, they might write something in here, but what, what you're acknowledging in this form is any firm, any additional terms or conditions that the IRS revenue officer might have placed in here. And you're basically abiding by those. So in the direct debit section, you'll attach a voided check and you'll, you know, enter the routing number. And then we'll just we'll put your account number as one. Obviously, it's whatever is on your check. Now, if you cannot make de debit payments, then you would check this box saying that you're not able to make debit payments. If you don't check that box, uh, that indicates that you are able to do debit payments but you're choosing not to and so again as we we already discussed uh, your setup fee will be higher if you choose not to make debit payments and the IRS will probably be uh, very watchful to make sure that your monthly payments come in on time you'll sign the day for you'll sign the form you'll date the form let's just call it And then if you needed to sign, you'll sign, your spouse will sign here if this is a joint tax debt. At the bottom of the form is a field marked for IRS use only. Um, you don't need to know anything about uh, this particular form, although you might want to uh, keep an eye out on this. Um, this is kind of notification on how far the IRS has been in collections. So another note that you should be aware of as long as you are uh, attempting to submit some sort of an agreement for payment of your taxes uh, while the IRS has received that and is processing that paperwork uh, the collection efforts that the IRS may have will cease now depending on what happens with that determination uh, the IRS does reserve the right to um, move forward if an agreement is not reached. So for example, if you submit this form and it comes back as rejected, during the period of time that the IRS is considering uh, whether or not to accept or reject this installment agreement, uh, the, the collections process has stopped. Once they decide uh, to reject this, then uh, you'll receive written notification as well as notification as to when the collections process is to resume. So uh, that is it for the form. And if you wanted to have more information on everything we discussed, you can see the back of the form, uh, instructions to taxpayer, uh, has a lot more information. So uh, if you want more detail about this form and uh, and if there are particular items that you're looking for, uh, you can check out our article, which you can find on teachmepersonalfinance.com. Type in IRS Form 433D, and you should find our article. If you like our newsletters, uh, if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, 
uh, please, please let us know in the comments section or send me an email. Thank you very much.